hymns and songs number 36. God's hymns and songs number 36. I'm bought not with riches, neither silver nor gold, but Christ has redeemed me. I'm safe in his fold, in the book of his kingdom, which is pages so fair. Through Jesus, my Savior, my name written there. My sin day, there were many, that the sand of the sea, but the blood of my Savior is sufficient for me. For his promise is written in bright letters that glow. Though your sin be as scarlet, I will make them like snow. Oh, that beautiful city, with its mansions of light, with its glorious beings in pure garments of white, where no evil thing coming to despoil what is fair, where the angels are watching. My name is written there. My name is written there on the page white and fair in the book of God's kingdom. My name is written there.
Psalms number 140. Sunday message today, we shall have a brief period of scripture reading. The Acts of the Apostles. The Acts of the Apostles. Acts 22. Acts 22. Men, brethren, and fathers, hear ye my defense which I make now unto you. And when they heard that he spake in the Hebrew tongue to them, they kept the more silence. And he saith, I am verily a man which am a Jew, born in Tarsus, a city in Cilicia, yet brought up in this city at the feet of Gamaliel, and taught according to the perfect manner of the law of the fathers, and was zealous toward God, as ye all are this day. And I persecuted this way unto the death, binding and delivering into prisons both men and women, as also the high priest doth bear me witness, and all the estate of the elders, from whom also I received letters unto the brethren, and went to Damascus to bring them which were there bound unto Jerusalem for to be punished. And it came to pass that as I made my journey and was come nigh unto Damascus about noon, suddenly there shone from heaven a great light round about me, and I fell unto the ground and heard a voice saying unto me, Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? And I answered, Who art thou, Lord? And he said unto me, I am Jesus of Nazareth, whom thou persecutest. And they that were with me saw indeed the light and were afraid, but they heard not the voice of him that spake to me. And I said, What shall I do, Lord? And the Lord said unto me, Arise and go into Damascus, and there it shall be told thee of all things which are appointed for thee to do. And when I could not see for the glory of that light, being led by the hand of them that were with me, I came into Damascus. And one Ananias, a devout man according to the law, having a good report of all the Jews which dwelt there, came unto me and stood and said unto me, Brother Saul, receive thy sight. And the same hour I looked up upon him, and he said, The God of our fathers hath chosen thee, that thou shouldest know his will, and see that just one, and shouldest hear the voice of his mouth. For thou shalt be his witness unto all men of what thou hast seen and heard. And now why tarriest thou? Arise and be baptized, and wash away thy sins, calling on the name of the Lord. And it came to pass that when I was come again to Jerusalem, even while I prayed in the temple, I was in a trance, and saw him saying unto me, Make haste, and get thee quickly out of Jerusalem, for they will not receive thy testimony concerning me. And I said, Lord, they know that I am imprisoned and beat in every synagogue them that believed on thee. And when the blood of thy martyr Stephen was shed, I also was standing by and consenting unto his death and kept the raiment of them that slew him. And he said unto me, Depart, for I will send thee far hence unto the Gentiles. And they gave him audience unto this word and then lifted up their voices and said, Away with such a fellow from the earth, for it is not fit that he should live. And as they cried out and cast off their clothes and threw dust into the air, the chief captain commanded him to be brought into the castle and bade that he should be examined by scourging, that he might know wherefore they cried so against him. And as they bound him with thongs, Paul said unto the centurion that stood by, Is it lawful for you to scourge a man that is a Roman and uncondemned? When the centurion heard that, he went and told the chief captain, saying, Take heed what thou doest, for this man is a Roman. Then the chief captain came and said unto him, Tell me, art thou a Roman? He said, Yea. And the chief captain answered, With a great sum obtained I this freedom. And Paul said, But I was free born. Then straightway they departed from him, which should have examined him. And the chief captain also was afraid, after he knew that he was a Roman and because he had bound him. On the morrow, because he would have known the certainty wherefore he was accused of the Jews, he loosed him from his bands and commanded the chief priests and all their council to appear and brought Paul down and set him before them. Acts 23. And Paul, earnestly beholding the council, said, Men and brethren, I have lived in all good conscience before God until this day. And the high priest Ananias commanded them that stood by him to smite him on the mouth. Then said Paul unto him, God shall smite thee, thou whited wall, for sittest thou to judge me after the law, and commandest me to be smitten contrary to the law? And they that stood by said, Revilest thou God's high priest? Then said Paul, 
I wist not, brethren, that he was the high priest, for it is written, Thou shalt not speak evil of the ruler of thy people. But when Paul perceived that the one part were Sadducees and the other Pharisees, he cried out in the council, Men and brethren, I am a Pharisee, the son of a Pharisee. Of the hope and resurrection of the dead I am called in question. And when he had so said, there arose a dissension between the Pharisees and the Sadducees, and the multitude was divided. For the Sadducees say that there is no resurrection, neither angel nor spirit, but the Pharisees confess both. And there arose a great cry, and the scribes that were of the Pharisees' part arose and strove, saying, We find no evil in this man, but if a spirit or an angel hath spoken to him, let us not fight against God. And when there arose a great dissension, the chief captain, fearing lest Paul should have been pulled in pieces of them, commanded the soldiers to go down and to take him by force from among them and to bring him into the castle. And the night following the Lord stood by him and said, Be of good cheer, Paul, for as thou hast testified of me in Jerusalem, so must thou bear witness also at Rome. And when it was day, certain of the Jews banded together and bound themselves under a curse, saying that they would neither eat nor drink till they had killed Paul. Forty which had made this conspiracy. And they came to the chief priests and elders and said, We have bound ourselves under a great curse that we will eat nothing until we have slain Paul. Now therefore ye with the council signify to the chief captain that he bring him down unto you tomorrow, as though ye would inquire something more perfectly concerning him. And we, or ever he come near, are ready to kill him. And when Paul's sister's son heard of their lying in wait, he went and entered into the castle and told Paul. Then Paul called one of the centurions unto him and said, Bring this young man unto the chief captain, for he hath a certain thing to tell him. So he took him and brought him to the chief captain and said, Paul the prisoner called me unto him and prayed me to bring this young man unto thee, who hath something to say unto thee. Then the chief captain took him by the hand and went with him aside privately and asked him, What is that thou hast to tell me? And he said, The Jews have agreed to desire thee that thou wouldest bring down Paul tomorrow into the council, as though they would inquire somewhat of him more perfectly. But do not thou yield unto them, for there lie in wait for him of them more than forty men, which have bound themselves with an oath that they will neither eat nor drink till they have killed him. And now are they ready, looking for a promise from thee. So the chief captain then let the young man depart and charged him, See thou tell no man that thou hast showed these things to me. And he called unto him two centurions, saying, Make ready two hundred soldiers to go to Caesarea, and horsemen threescore and ten, and spearmen two hundred at the third hour of the night, and provide them beasts that they may set Paul on, and bring him safe unto Felix the governor. And he wrote a letter after this manner. Claudius Lysias unto the most excellent governor Felix sendeth greeting. This man was taken of the Jews, and should have been killed of them. Then came I with an army, and rescued him, having understood that he was a Roman. And when I would have known the cause wherefore they accused him, I brought him forth into their council whom I perceived to be accused of questions of their law, but to have nothing laid to his charge worthy of death or of bonds. And when it was told me how that the Jews laid wait for the man, I sent straightway to thee and gave commandment to his accusers also to say before thee what they had against him. Farewell. Then the soldiers, as it was commanded them, took Paul and brought him by night to Antipatris. On the morrow they left the horsemen to go with him and returned to the castle who, when they came to Caesarea and delivered the epistle to the governor, presented Paul also before him. And when the governor had read the letter, he asked of what province he was. And when he understood that he was of Cilicia, I will hear thee, said he, when thine accusers are also come. And he commanded him to be kept in Herod's judgment hall. May God help us to be doers of the word. Amen.
can't take anymore. Jeff says you'll never reach the shore. God says you're going to make it. for your people your servants our ministers brothers and sisters we're asking lord that tonight you enrich every life in jesus name and your purpose of bringing us here you will fulfill abundantly for every life in jesus name bless everyone without exception show us what we need to know and let your grace your power your strength energize everyone for the ministry ahead in jesus name we thank you because we know you have answered 
in Jesus name we pray tonight we are coming to John chapter 15 I was reading from verse 8 John 15 reading from verse 8 herein is my father glorified that he bear much fruit so shall ye be my disciples the Lord is telling us something very important showing us what we need to do and who we need to be he says if we're going to be his disciples we must bear fruit bear more fruit bear much fruit and then the father will be glorified if the father will be glorified and God will be happy and the Lord Jesus Christ will also be happy his desires being fulfilled only when disciples bear fruit how about preachers how about pastors how about ministers how about workers in the kingdom of God the Lord is glorified and the ministry is exalted sinners are saved and many people come into the kingdom when we bear fruit bear more fruit and bear much fruit in verse 16 it tells us the reason why he chose us and the reason why he appointed us and the reason why he chose you in particular and appointed you in particular always understand that why am i a minister why am i a pastor why am i a preacher why am i a chosen person in the hands of the lord it says ye have not chosen me but i have chosen you stop there for a moment you cannot say i chose it and so i can give it up you cannot say because i took it up myself i can give it up anytime i want the lord says no that you have not chosen him and you have not chosen the ministry but he himself has chosen you think about moses it wasn't moses that chose his ministry to the children of israel and so he couldn't give up and say i'm no more doing it it wasn't aaron that chose himself to be the high priest in the land of israel the lord chose him and then it say when you think about joshua it says my servant moses is dead rise up now go before the people and divide the land before them it, joshua did not choose the lord but the lord chose joshua i have found my servant david in whom he has a heart to fulfill my will the lord chose him and when you think about paul the apostle it was the lord that chose him and then the same thing with you the same thing with me the same thing with every one of us you yeah, have not chosen me but i have chosen you and so you cannot toss the ministry off and give it up i'm tired i'm weak i don't know what the people are doing and i'm not seeing the much fruit i want to see maybe i should have a substitute an alternative you have not chosen him he has chosen you and ordained you that he should go and bring forth fruit that's the purpose that's the plan that's the reason why the lord has chosen each of us and it says that your fruit may remain shall remain and that whatsoever ye shall ask of the father in my name he may give it to you in the process of working for the lord in the process of ministry in the process of fulfilling the call and the choice the lord has given you you will come across challenges that will require prayer you'll come across needs and counseling that will require prayer you'll come across uh, people in the ministry in the church that will request for your prayers in your personal life there'll be times you will need to pray and the lord gives the assurance once you are set by him and you accept his offer and you accept what he has called you to do and you know you cannot give up the ministry toss away the ministry anytime you want and you are there you are abiding in that work in the ministry in the place he has chosen for you and placed you whatsoever you will ask as a minister as a preacher as a pastor 
as a personal individual believer whatsoever ye shall ask of the father he will give it to you he will answer your prayers in jesus name today we're talking on they were speaking on the topic advancing towards higher productive leadership advancing towards higher productive leadership that means as a leader you are not stagnant as a leader you are not in one place all the time as a leader you are making progress you are advancing and you are moving from one level to a higher level how will that happen how can we do that three points we're looking at number one anointing of the spirit for purified leaders the anointing of the spirit of god for purified leaders number two advancing in his service advancing in the work of the lord with purposeful leaders we have to have purpose you have to have purpose in your heart and purpose in developing program having the process and going through the strategies everything you need to do everything you ought to do you have to look at your community and you have to look at the people the sinners and the saints the members of the church and those who are non-church members and to develop program for them you want to advance and you want to bring believers into the church you want to develop members of the church there will be a purpose of heart advancing in his service with purposeful leaders number three abiding in the stewardship for productive leadership abiding in the stewardship if you are off and on in and out walking and not walking busy and idle and you are not abiding in stewardship abiding with a steadfast heart abiding with a purposeful heart abiding with programs and process and the need to actually be available every time ministry to the people there's not going to be any advancement and there's not going to, going to be any growth but you're abiding in the stewardship for productive leadership let's come to number one number one anointing of the spirit for purified leaders we're looking at um, first Corinthians, second corinthians chapter 1 verses 21 and 22 anointing we need anointing we need the power of the spirit we need unction and we need endowment of power the spirit of god enveloping us energizing us from the inner man and showing us where we ought to go and what we ought to do and when we get to that point of ministry and that point of service to give us the necessary power to carry out the thing the ministry he has called us to effectively fulfill over there in second corinthians chapter one reading from verse 21 now he which establishes us with you in christ and has anointed us is god he establishes us apostles with you the ministers and the members and he has anointed us apostles and ministers and pastors and evangelists and teachers everyone with you the ministers soul winners and the members he who has done that giving us that anointing is god himself look at verse 22 in verse 22 who has also sealed us he establishes us he anoints us he empowers us he seals us with the seal of protection and the seal of preservation and he has given us the earnest he has given us the force to deposit and he has given us the initial power of the spirit in our hearts and that is how god anoints us your sage you're sanctified and now he anoints you with power let's look at three things here number one anointing after purifying sanctification a kind of sanctification that is not a notion in the head a kind of sanctification that brings purity of heart and after that purifying sanctification 
you have the anointing of the Holy Ghost you have the endowment of power number two assurance through promise sanctification he has given the promise and because he has given the promise and he is a faithful God what he has promised he will always remember not only that is a mighty powerful god what is able to do is willing to do and he has the power to carry out his own promise and because of that we have the assurance after we're saved and then we go to the lord with consecration and with commitment and we yield ourselves from the inner man to the spirit the body every part of us that is born by the price of the blood of Jesus will say I belong to you I'm bought with a price everything in me every skill I have every talent I have is yours because you have purchased me with that great precious price and I laid that upon the altar and then with faith we pray that it will purify it will circumcise the heart it will sanctify us it'll do it we we'll, we'll have assurance through the promise sanctification and then with the anointing and the prayer of assurance we have authority of prayerful sins the authority of prayerful sins after we're saved we don't stop praying after we're sanctified we don't stop praying after we are filled with the Holy Ghost we don't stop praying we keep on praying and we have the assurance that when we stand on the promises of God those promises are going to be fulfilled and we have authority thereby because we are importunate in prayer because we are faithful in prayer because we are diligent in prayer because we always hold on to the promise of God in prayer let's look at number one there that's the anointing after purifying sanctification understand that word sanctification understand the qualifying word purifying anybody that says i have sanctification i experience sanctification i possess sanctification there must be that qualifying word purifying sanctification that sanctification purifies us that sanctification purges us and if we really have the experience there's purity of heart purity of life purity of language purity of intention purity of motive everything within everything around is purified look at acts chapter 15 verse 9 acts chapter 15 verse 9 and he put no difference between us and them here peter was talking about the house of cornelius and they were gentiles he put no difference between us jews and the gentiles house of cornelius purifying their hearts by faith purifying their hearts by faith now you understand that in the house of cornelius as peter was declaring the word and preaching the word there wasn't a separate time okay now get saved and let's settle that that's all right now you must get consecrated now let's settle that get sanctified and then you must settle this you must have the holy ghost baptism in god's own sovereign way he gave them those experiences their hearts were open and they were ready and they wanted everything the lord had for them and they told the peter here we are we're all here to receive to have to possess everything you have for us and then the lord saved and sanctified and filled with the holy ghost and the revelation of a peter tells us that he purified their hearts by faith on their own part they had faith in god and because of that faith in god they might not know they might not know at that time the death and the ways of that sanctification experience but they had the purifying 
of their hearts by faith in God. It was after that now the Holy Ghost baptism and the anointing of the Spirit came on them. Acts chapter 11. In Acts chapter 11 verse 15, it tells us, And as I began to speak, the Holy Ghost fell on them as on us at the beginning. You understand what Peter is saying here? He's saying uh, the sanctification we had is what they had, and the Holy Ghost baptism we had is what they had. No difference at all. He says, as I was speaking to them, as I was declaring the truth to them, that Christ is our Savior, and that all the prophets of the Old Testament they bear witness to this fact that Jesus Christ is the one that was sent to give us remission, forgiveness, redemption from sin. As I was speaking to them, telling them about the place of Christ, the position of Christ, the power of Christ, and all that the Father in heaven had ordained that Jesus Christ would be. I was just talking to them like that. We had not even started praying for the message to end. The Holy Ghost fell on them as on us at the beginning. And then it says in verse 16, then remembered I the word of the Lord, how he had said, John indeed baptized with water, John immersed in water, and John enveloped them in water, and John dipped them in water, so that the water was all over them and all around them in the same way. As John immersed the people in water, they'll be immersed in the Holy Ghost. They'll be saturated with the Holy Ghost. And they will be endued with the Holy Ghost all around them, all over them, and all within them. And John indeed baptized with water, but ye shall be baptized of the Holy Ghost. And then verse 17, it says in verse 17, for as much then, as God gave them the like gift as he did unto us, the Gentiles, the Lord gave them the same, the like gift as he gave to us, they shall receive power. The Lord gave them the same power as he gave to us. When the Holy Ghost comes, it will lead you into all truth. The Lord gave them that teacher, the Holy Ghost, as he gave unto us. The Lord gave them the one that will reveal the might of Christ and reveal the future. He gave them the whole package as he gave unto us at the beginning. Who believed on the Lord Jesus Christ, what was I? That I could withstand God. He was saying, they were not even baptized in water yet, but they were saved, they were sanctified, and they were filled with the Holy Ghost. And if the Lord did that for the Jews and for the Gentiles, as He did for them, the promise is unto you and to your children and to many that are far off even as many as the lord our god shall call if you then been able know how to give good give good gifts unto your children how much more shall your father who is in heaven give the holy spirit to them that ask him that's why we're commanded be filled with the Holy Ghost and not be drunk with wine. Be being filled, you are filled before. Be filled again, be saturated again, be empowered again, be endued again with the Holy Ghost. It will do it in every life in Jesus' name. Look at number two now. Number two, assurance through the promised sanctification. Salvation has been promised, we can come, he'll give to us. Sanctification has been promised, we can come, he'll give to us purity of heart and purity of life, that he purifies us as any man that ever lived could ever be pure. How pure was enough? He can do that for you. 
how pure was joseph he can do that for you how pure was moses he can do that for you how pure was paul the apostle he can do that for you how paul were the disciples and the uh, followers of the lord jesus christ when he prayed to the father and he says sanctify them through thy truth thy word is truth and he said i pray not for these alone but for all them that shall believe on my name through their word how pure were they you can be as pure as that your, your heart can be pure your mind can be pure your language can be pure your disposition can be pure and your intention your desires can be pure you can be pure within and without because this is the promise of god and this is what he said he will do he will do it in every life look at leviticus chapter 20 verses 7 and 8 leviticus chapter 20 verse 7 sanctify yourself therefore you must understand as students of the word that that word sanctify has actually two sides to it one side is being set apart the other side is being made holy as you look at any good dictionary it will tell you you have the word sanctify set apart you have the word sanctify that same word made holy and on the human side you are the one to set yourself apart the lord's hand is upon you before you were born i knew you and I ordained you jeremiah chapter 1 verse 5 to be a prophet unto the nations he set you apart and you come in agreement with the lord and you sanctify yourself you set yourself apart you say the will of god is what i want to do the word of god is what i want to be the path of righteousness is what i want to follow everything the lord ordains for me is what i want you do set yourself apart sanctify yourselves therefore and be ye holy if there are things you need to take off from your life some bad habits you need to turn away from and some things will be used to in your life that will not make you a real standing new creature new testament believer by yourself those things you can get rid of you get rid of them you throw them away from your life be ye holy for i i am the lord your god and the lord your god means you are born again already it means you are saved already and now in verse 8 in verse 8 it says and ye shall keep my statutes and do them you cannot do that without being born again you are saved and when you are saved you are made free from sin and you become a servant of righteousness being then made free from sin will become the servants of righteousness and will bring the fruit of holiness unto god and because of that he shall keep my statutes and do them i am the lord which sanctify you but it says sanctify yourselves that's the first meaning of sanctification now i am the lord that sanctify you he is the one that does the internal work the experiential work and the second work of grace he affects that in your life look at deuteronomy chapter 30 verse 6 the same thing but now he uses another language another word for that sanctification and the lord thy god will circumcise thine heart the children of Israel had their body already sanctified, flesh sanctifi flesh um, circumcised rather, flesh circumcision, but now the heart. What does that mean? In the fleshless circumcision, the tissue they brought into the world, which should not be part of their life, that will just be collecting bacteria. All that is caught away. That is the fleshless circumcision. And the same thing now in the heart the heart were brought into the world with adamic nature with depravity and that will just be collecting defilement and collecting things that are not right iniquity before the lord the lord says you cannot do this one you cannot reach into your heart and circumcise your heart and sanctify your heart 
and purify your heart and cleanse your heart and so purge your heart that it will be a heart that will please God every time and the Lord says but I'll do that for you that's why it says and the Lord thy God will circumcise thine heart he will as you come to him he must as you come to him it is a promise that cannot fail and we have the assurance that as you come to the Lord and say thank you Lord because I'm saved thank you Lord because I'm forgiven thank you Lord because I'm a new creature in Christ I come now for what you have promised you said you sanctify me and you said you'll purify me you said you'll take that Adamic nature I brought into the world you said you'll take it away lord i come to you now circumcise my heart and it is to love thy god when that sanctification takes place when that uh, circumcision of heart takes place it will make you to love the lord thy god with all thine heart you'll not be part here and part there your love will be pure your love will be full your love will be transparent your love will be persevering your love will be permanent for, for God and that's the first commandment according to the watch of the Lord Jesus Christ the great and the first commandment is this that you love the Lord your God with all your heart all your soul all your mind and all your strength and that is only possible and God requires that and God is not finished with you until that is done and he does that on the basis of this second work of grace that he now circumcises you to love your God with all your heart and with all your soul that thou mayest live that's real life that's real life spiritual life abundant life a fulfilling life and a fulfilled life that thou mayest live look at number three here number three is authority of praises the authority of praises as I said before at the point of salvation we pray after salvation we keep on praying any temptation coming any trial coming we pray whatever may be going on whatever may be happening we're happy we keep praying we're sad we keep on praying we're well we're healthy we're sound we're giving thanks to God we're praying we seek or we're weak we're praying we pray without ceasing every day there'll be a reason to pray a need to praise God a need to exalt the name of the Lord if you are a believer if you are a Christian prayer must be the obvious thing of your life must be the characteristic that is well known in your life and now it tells us the authority we have when we pray sage you are praying sanctified you keep on praying feel of the Holy Ghost you keep on praying a member you keep on praying you become a minister your praying comes up and goes up and then you have a new level higher level of responsibility in the kingdom in the ministry in the church and as you are growing in opportunities your prayerfulness is also increasing and growing that is the normal process and the normal growth we ought to have and that gives us authority we're told in acts chapter one reading from verse four acts chapter one reading from verse four and being assembled together with them commanded them that's talking about christ that's talking about the savior that's talking about the commander in chief that's talking about the one we're giving our hearts to and then he decides everything that happens in our lives every move in our lives every direction of our life every decision of our life where we stay where we go what where we refuse to go he decides everything and he doesn't give us the liberty to take our lives into our hands and say tomorrow I will do this next tomorrow I will do that we have abandoned our hearts unto him and is the controller is the commander 
in our lives he has bought us with a price and will become his bond slave is the one that, that commanded them and said they should not depart from jerusalem but wait for the promise of the father he prayed for their sanctification after salvation after sanctification now you wait and pray and tarry for the promise of the father which says he ye have heard of me because in verse 8 it tells us in verse 8 but he shall receive power that's why he wanted them to wait that's why he wants you to tarry you get back home we don't have enough time during the service to pray but you get back home and while the message is still fresh and while the revelation is still fresh and while the desire to follow after the lord is still fresh you wait upon the lord because he shall receive power after that the holy ghost is come upon you and ye shall be witnesses unto me the power will come ye shall be witnesses unto me you must be saved then ye shall be witnesses unto me you must be sanctified then you shall be witnesses unto me you must be filled saturated and beloved empowered with the spirit of god baptized in the holy ghost and power ought to be in your life and then you shall be witnesses unto me both in jerusalem when you have the tendency to run away because he crucified our lord where those pharisees are where those sadducees are where the people that do not want to hear the gospel and he said let his blood be upon us and our children where those rigid religionists and traditional people are in jerusalem let the power come and ye shall be witnesses unto me both in jerusalem and in all judea in all those uh, surroundings where you have syncretic religion they are half a breed of people half jewish and half a gentile and in and in samaria and then unto the uttermost part of the earth even where it appears civilization has not reached let the power come and then you will have the assurance and as you pray you pray and preach you pray and counsel you pray and minister you pray and do whatever you are going to do in the lord and for the lord and everything you do for the lord from the preaching to the counseling to the uh, praying for people and everything everything is saturated with prayer there will be authority in your life in jesus name we're coming to point number two now point number two is advancing in his service with purposeful leaders advancing in his service with purposeful leaders you want to know my brother my sister nothing of note is done in this world without a purpose of heart if you don't have any purpose in your heart every little wind that blows will make you to change every little difficulty every little trial every little pebble on the road every little sun that um, you know pinches you or hurts you will make you to change the weather will make you to change it's too hot everybody is sweating it's too cold it is raining and the climate politically will make you to change the kind the nature of the place where you are where you are ministering you are hearing some bad news and you are not listening to news from heaven you're only listening to news from earth every little scene that goes beyond the normal and becomes a little um, a little kind of aberration or abnormal will make you to change because there is no purpose of heart that's why we're told and daniel purposed in his heart here we are in babylon it's a different place it's a defiling place and here all that we have learned 
from whom before we came to Babylon every sin will go into the drain will not be able to do anything here take any stand here and live for the glory of God here if we don't have a purpose of earth and Daniel purposed in his heart everything you learn at the Bible study you learn leadership development uh, session everything you learn in the workers meeting everything you learn in your personal devotional time you will not carry anything out without a purpose of heart to understand that's my destination and to understand that's the direction I'm going to understand this is what God had called me to do and it will be done there may be support there may be opposition there may be persecution there may be difficulties there may be challenges you need a purpose of heart and I pray God will do that for every one of us in Jesus name and let's look at let's look at a uh, second timothy chapter 3 and we're looking at verse 10 second timothy chapter 3 and we're reading from verse 10 it says but thou has fully known my doctrine here is paul the apostle he was talking to timothy and he was trying to a kind of a brace of a timothy emboldening timothy he was trying to challenge timothy you are young and it appears you have a timid nature a fearful nature and if you're going to do anything and work consistently and profitably and productively in the kingdom of God look at the qualities God has raised up in me and then I want that to be reproduced in you but thou hast known my doctrine and manner of life and purpose and purpose and faith and long suffering and charity and patience look at the purpose in the middle there without purpose you'll not be able to maintain doctrine as long as you have as soon as you have questions and criticism and then the people religious and irreligious speak against you without purpose of heart you cannot stand by doctrine manner of life your manner of life you decide that in the prayer room you decide that as you read the word of god you take the pattern of life the manner of life out of what you read out of the word of god here is what god wants me to be here is the way god wants me to live and you ought to be a champion in your community a hero in your community and unbending consecrated courageous conqueror in your neighborhood but without purpose of heart that manner of life is not possible faith as you think about all the things you are you are ought to pray for you've read the promises of god and you believe i believe god it shall be even as it was told me without purpose of heart to abide and to remain where that challenge is where that problem is without purpose faith is impossible and long suffering how can you have long suffering now once there is little pressure a little challenge a little difficulty without purpose of heart here is where god has sent me and i will abide in that place where god has sent me and it doesn't matter the suffering coming from any direction i will still long abide long have long suffering purpose of heart is necessary charity that's love you try to do good to people and you do charity you do all the good you can at all the times you can in all the places you can by all the means you can and as long as ever as you can and you make up your mind i will do good i will help everybody anyone in need that calls for my attention that needs my skill that needs my availability i'm available but you know without purpose of heart when you help people and then they return it with you know something unpleasant and you try to lift up people the people you are trying to lift up they're trying to pull you down without purpose of heart that will not be possible and patience can you have patience with people patience with a problem and patience in the peculiarities of your life without purpose of heart 
the point is this if we're going to advance in the service of the lord we need purposeful leadership three things we're looking at number one advancing through addition advancing through addition number two advantage over adversaries we must always find out how can i have advantage over adversaries there are many adversaries there are many challenges how can i still keep myself on top of the boiling water on top of the raging sea advantage over adversaries number three admonition from our advocate our advocate is the lord jesus christ he has given us admonition number one advancing through addition how can you advance how can you be better today than you were yesterday the solution the answer is addition how can you be better this new year beyond what you were in the previous years the answer is addition what does that mean second peter chapter one we're reading from verse three in second peter chapter one reading from verse three according as his divine power has given unto us all things that pertain unto life stop there for a moment he has given us all things but facing the fact looking at practical details and issues of our lives we're not enjoying the all things why because we're not praying to possess the all things we're not enjoying we're not experiencing we're not seeing the all things why because we're here and then we move away we're here and we forget we hear we don't take it to the lord in prayer we hear this is the way to go what he in it and we know that's the right thing to do but we are superficial but if we're going to enjoy everything he has provided the time comes in our lives and we say time is going i have spent a long time and i've not got everything that had been given unto me and will say i will not let you go like jacob until you bless me i will take all those things that the lord has given one by one and claim that and stand on that and then go out to see what we have and to see the good of what we have he has given unto us already he says according as his divine power and uh, uh, he says he has given all things that pertain to life and that pertain to godliness through the knowledge of him that has called us to glory and to virtue and then in verse 4 it says in verse 4 whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises that by these promises ye might be partakers of the divine nature partakers of the divine nature do i understand what i read do i know the height and the depths and the ramifications of the promise the lord is given do i know the intention of the lord in promising what he has promised the divine nature is the very nature of god any animal having the nature of the lion will be as bold as a lion any animal having the nature of an eagle will fly and will have the vision and the foresight and the far side of an eagle anyone that has the nature of the fish will be able to swim in any river now come back he has given unto us the divine nature if we add the nature of god if we went to prayer and claimed the promise of god that he gives us to become possessors partakers of the divine nature 
guess what we can be and guess what we can do in any place in any situation by the call of the ministry understanding not just theoretically as an experience as salvation is a definite experience as sanctification is a definite experience and the power baptism in the Holy Ghost is a definite experience if you wait to the Lord if I wait to the Lord and I said Lord and you said Lord this is what you have promised that you will grant us to be partakers of the divine nature coming out of that prayer closet you'll be different you're going to be different in Jesus name having escaped the corruption that is in the world through laws it will not matter any part of the world you are ministering you escape the corruption the defilement the iniquity this transgression and the peculiar evil in that community it makes you to escape the corruption that is in the world through laws look at verse 5 now advancing through addition the foundation has been set salvation is definite sanctification is definite power of the holy ghost is definite is granted you to be a partaker of the divine nature and besides this giving all diligence arch that's how we advance arch that's how we advance arch to your faith virtue and to virtue knowledge verse 6 it says and to knowledge temperance it says you keep on adding keep on adding keep on adding because if you ever start and you hang your right hand with um, a cord from your neck and you hang that hand there by the time you bring that hand out after one year you cannot use the hand again what you don't use you lose and what you don't add by itself by natural law will be vanishing away you're becoming less and less and less but if you're going to advance and you're going to remain advancing you're going to continue advancing your art to knowledge temperance and your art to temperance patience you do it deliberately and to patience godliness and then in verse 7 and to godliness brotherly kindness and to brotherly kindness charity look at verse 8 now it says if these things be in you and abound because you are adding and adding and adding they make you that ye shall neither be barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our lord jesus christ let's look at number two number two advantage over the adversaries advantage over the adversaries there are people that work in the world without remembering that satan is the god of this world there are people who minister in the world and they seem to have this erroneous idea that the world is a bed of roses that all you are going to find in the world uh, will be something comfortable something nice something pleasant there's no danger there's no difficulty there's no challenge anywhere in the world but we need to remember that the world is under the control of the evil one yet after understanding there are adversaries in the world we need to know where we stand at advantage advantage over the adversaries first corinthians chapter 16 we're reading from verse 9 first corinthians 
chapter 16 verse 9 for a great door and effectual is opened unto me and there are many adversaries many adversaries many adversaries but understand the advantage the door has been opened from heaven those adversaries are here on earth and there's no power on earth that can effectively stop any sin that had been originated orchestrated and given from heaven that's the advantage that the one on high and the most high and the god of heaven and jesus christ our lord and savior who has conquered the devil who has conquered death who has conquered disease who has conquered demons who has conquered every power that may be on earth he is the one in heaven who has opened the door not only that a great door a great door of opportunity a great door of ministry and god has done that for a purpose although there are many adversaries here on earth but all those adversaries here on earth think about it like this they are like reptiles they are walking on the earth and then you they that wait upon the lord shall renew their strength they will mount up with wings as eagles like you are like a flying eagle and the reptiles on the ground they cannot fly they cannot get to the height you have gone to you have an advantage spiritual they are earthly you're spiritual they are fleshly and you have the power of god the power that created the whole universe and they cannot create anything our advantage is that it is the god of heaven who has opened the door for us and then paul the apostle said unto me unto me he said look at this although really i'm the least of the saints and the least of the apostles not qualified to be an apostle and yet a door opened to me that was not opened unto peter not opened unto john not opened unto the initial disciples of the lord jesus christ what an advantage we have this great advantage and the lord makes you to see more of your advantages rather than your adversaries in jesus name did i hear an amen luke chapter 21 verse 15 in luke chapter 21 reading from verse 15 here is the lord jesus christ talking to his own disciples and i will give you a mouth and wisdom which all your adversaries put together shall not be able to gain say nor receive i will give you a mouth that will not be closed when you ought to talk a mouth that will not be trembling when you ought to speak courageously a mouth associated with a heart that is having the revelation of heaven i will give you a mouth and i'll give you wisdom which all your adversaries no matter their background and no matter their learning and no matter their occultic power or any other kind of power they have that all your adversaries shall not be able to give say oppose or receive look at um, philippians chapter 1 we're reading from verse 27 philippians chapter 1 reading from verse 27 only let your conversation be as it becomes the gospel of christ that whether i come and see you or else be absent i be hear of your affairs look at this that she stand fast in one spirit energized in your spirit empowered in your spirit stabilized solid steadfast in your spirit and with with one mind striving for the together for the face of the gospel in verse 28 
in verse 28 it says and in nothing be terrified by your adversaries in nothing be terrified by your adversaries look beyond those adversaries and look at the lord himself the lion of the tribe of judah the one who called you and the one who raised you up and the one who says i set a great door before you and all those adversaries they will not be able to give say or resist or oppose or overpower you look beyond those adversaries and in nothing be terrified by your adversaries which is to them an evident token of perdition but to you of salvation and of god of salvation and of god the lord will stand by you and the lord will stay by you you will always have advantage over all the adversaries in jesus name look at number three now number three admonition from our advocate admonition from our advocate it tells us in matthew chapter 24 verse 12 matthew chapter 24 verse 12 and because iniquity shall abound the love of many shall wax cold because iniquity shall abound there are times in the community in which we live maybe you've been living there now for more than five years ten years and then iniquity violence terrible things are happening that didn't happen seven eight ten years ago iniquity abounding because of that, there are some people they give up they collapse they fold up their love or work school it may be in the state where you are where your ministry maybe in the local government you've been there now for some time it was peaceful there before and people had some level of morality and they knew that you can't do this you can't do that and the and the society over there was kind of a uh, convenient and uh, and it gave to seven let itself to ministering the gospel but now things are changing over there and because violence will be on the increase iniquity on the increase abounding the love of many shall wax cold it may be in the office where you are working uh, there's a level of uh, predictability that is you could predict what will happen what could not happen but nowadays everything is unpredictable because iniquity is abounding uh, in that office because of that some people don't have any stench anymore they cannot stand on anything uh, they flow with the tide and they go with the world the love of many shall wax cold but not everybody will wax cold you will not wax cold i will not wax cold look at verse 13 then it says but he shall he that shall endure there's somebody that will single himself out there's a lady a sister that will single herself out yes i know what prevails i know what other people are doing i know the concept i know the understanding of other people i know their utterances you cannot stand here now it's not like 30 years ago and it's not like 40 years ago iniquity is abounding now and the love of many waxing cold everybody is giving up but there is a determined person a purposeful heart a purposeful leader that will not give up but he that shall endure unto the end the same shall be saved who is that person you will stand i said you will stand there is grace you know there is power you know there's the divine nature the nature of the lion of the tribe of judah you will stand in jesus name revelation chapter 2 verse 26 in revelation chapter 2 reading from verse 26 
he that overcometh and keepeth my works unto the end he that overcometh and keepeth my works the work of evangelism the work of discipling the work of going out and reaching out bringing them in compel them to come in and the work of making them stable and steadfast in the doctrine of the word of god and in the breaking of bread and in prayers being steadfast unto the end he that overcometh and keepeth my works unto the end to him will i give power over the nations chapter 3 verse 11 in chapter 3 verse 11 of revelation behold i come quickly hold that fast we can we can be steadfast hold that fast we can be focused we can be single-minded hold that fast if it were not possible the lord will not have told us to do it hold that fast what you have that which you have uh, that no man take thy crown no man will take your crown in jesus name point number three now abiding in the stewardship for productive leadership abiding in the stewardship for productive leadership look at john chapter 15 I'm reading from verse 4 abide abide in me and i in you abide in me close yourself with me abide in me so that my revelation is your revelation my inspiration is your inspiration my focus is your focus my progress is your progress the path i tread is the path you tread what i would have done if i were there at this time that is what you're doing abide in me and i in you my courage in you my vision in you my determination in you my purpose of heart in you my perseverance in you abide in me and i in you as the branch cannot be a fruit of itself except it abide in the vine no more can ye except ye abide in me look at verse 7 in verse 7 if ye abide in me and my words abide in you ye shall ask what you will and shall be done unto you three things we're looking at number one recognizing our assigned stewardship number two refusing all appealing substitutes number three rewarding approved single-mindedness number one recognizing our assigned stewardship in mark chapter 13 verse 34 mark chapter 13 verse 34 uh, for the son of man is as a man taking a far journey who led his house and he gave authority to his servants look at this and to every man his work and to every man his work and commanded the porter to watch look at the lord jesus christ himself the son of man taking a far journey is still worship had been assigned from the foundation of the world that's why it's referred to as the lamb slain from the foundation of the world if you remember i will bring enmity between you 
and the woman between her seed and your seed he will bruise your heel your head and thou shalt bruise his heel that's the assignment of the lord jesus christ that had been given he recognized that and he said i don't you know i must be about my father's business you remember jeremiah before you were born i ordained you i assigned, assigned you i pre-wrote you i wrote it down that you will be a prophet unto the nations you remember john the baptist his name shall be called john he'll be filled with the holy ghost from his mother's womb he will turn the hearts of the children unto the fathers he'll prepare the way of the lord remember paul the apostle that he who brought me out of my mother's womb he is the one who has called me and has shown me what to do he recognized that he gave authority to the servants and to every man his work he has given you the work to do recognize that abide in that and stay in that look at number two there number two refusing all appealing substitutes there'll be substitutes there'll be things that will come to you and say doesn't this appeal to you this is substitute this is an alternative couldn't you do this look at hebrews chapter 11. hebrews chapter 11 reading from verse 24 by faith moses when he was come to years refused to be called the son of pharaoh's daughter that was an appealing substitute is it better for you to stay in the palace and to be the son of the emperor through your uh, through pharaoh's daughter and to rule over the nation of egypt the greatest power at that time in the whole earth but he refused to be called the son of pharaoh's daughter verse 25 this was the choice chosen rather to suffer affliction with the people of god than to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season why because in verse 26 esteeming the reproach of christ greater riches than the treasures in egypt for he had respect he had great evaluation he put a great value onto the recompense of the reward and i pray that same heart that same mind that will refuse all appealing substitutes god will grant to everyone in jesus name look at john chapter 6 verse 15 john chapter 6 verse 15 when jesus therefore perceived that they would come and make him take him by force and make him a king he departed again into a mountain himself alone why he was to be a king over israel one nation he was to be a king a political title over the people of israel because they expected he will deliver them from the roman power but he was looking at the cross and he preferred the cross to the earthly crown and it was an appealing substitute that he will be a king over them but no he'll be the lamb of god that takes the sin of the whole world away that is he will be the savior of the world the savior of sinners at that time and the savior of sinners every time in every generation until it will come again and then his time will come you'll be the king of kings and the lord of lords refusing all appealing substitutes in your life 
in your ministry there may be a pulling away somebody wants to draw you away and he wants to give you an appealing substitute but as you look at the calling of god at the ministry he has called you to all those things will not appeal to you you will stand in the way in the word in the will of god in jesus name number three now rewarding approved single-mindedness rewarding approved single-mindedness we're looking at isaiah chapter 50 verse 7 isaiah chapter 50 verse 7 for the lord god will help me that god will help you therefore shall i not be confounded you will not be confounded you will not be ashamed you will not be shaken out of the place the lord has put you in jesus name therefore have i searched my face like a flint and i know i shall not be ashamed i search my face as a flint i know my destination i know my calling i know the ministry that he has called me to and whatever wind is blowing whatever waves of the sea may be roaring i search my face as a flint you will not turn back you will not slow down you will not give up you will not turn to the right or to the left you will focus on where the lord has appointed for you in jesus name and this work of the lord will prosper in your hand all the privileges he opens before you all the great doors he opens before you whatever adversaries and whatever challenges you set your face as a flint and you'll keep on ministering and keep on doing the work of god and he will reward your work even in this life and on the final day in jesus name as i said before we don't have enough time here to pray now but when you go back home take everything we've heard today everything we've learned today take it back to the lord in prayer you will make progress in jesus name you will advance in jesus name higher you will go father you will go greater things you will do and everything that has not been done that the lord had assigned appointed for you to do you will do in jesus name nobody else will take your place all the power you need all the anointing all the unction you need the lord will grant unto you in jesus name give me a leadership amen let's rise up and talk to the lord in prayer let's rise up and talk to the lord in prayer while we call on pastor Hassan from fct to lead us in prayer <laughs>